I think Elon's in more trouble in a Trump presidency than a Kamala Harris. I think the real quiet winner in this is Peter Thiel. And I think he will take down all of them because he quietly, he's very sharp. He sits behind the scenes. Something Peter Thiel will never hear from a vice president or potentially a president Vance, something he will never hear is no, ever. Yeah, cost him $50 million. He's the one I'm watching. I'm not watching email. He's just a ridiculous circus of a person, and I think it'll end badly for him. But Peter Thiel's the one I'm looking at. Hi, everyone. JJ here. Welcome back. Well, this episode's about Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Peter Thiel, and J.D. Vance and the tangled web of money and politics that's developing there. This podcast hasn't dealt with politics very much, but it's getting hard to ignore with Elon and Tesla and the financial and political dealings he's got going at the moment. And of course, we're days away from the U.S. election, so I'm going to dive into it here. This is from the Pivot podcast with Kara Swisher and Scott Galloway. I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to see the whole episode, but let's see what they've got to say on the matter and I'll react to it. Elon is uh, randomly awarding a million dollar daily prize to registered swing voters who signed his PACS petition supporting the First and Second Amendments. Federal law says it's a crime to pay people with the intention of inducing a reward and be cast a voter get registered. But election law experts are split over whether his actions cross the line. See, I think this is just risk assessment by Elon. No, they're not going to come after him. And if Trump wins, it won't matter. Uh, his allies argue because he's not directly paying for registration, but for a petition signature, it's not illegal. It's very typical of him. This is a very typical risk he would take easily. So as she said there, Elon giving away the million dollars a day at the moment, questionable whether it's legal or not. But as she said, Elon's taking a risk here. He's weighing it up and probably thinks that he's not going to get in trouble for it. He's taking the risk, weighing up the odds and just going for it. After all, he is the richest person in the world on paper. He's going all in on Trump and doing seemingly doing everything he can to get Trump elected, including this kind of behavior. Gets a lot of attention, gives away money, and it's only in marginal seats as well. So what's going on now? Let's see what Scott's got to say. It all comes down to incentives and the algebra of deterrence. The whole point of our criminal justice system is that criminals do the math. Or when you're about to commit a crime, you do a math. And it's the following. The likelihood I'm caught times the potential penalty has to be greater than the potential upside. Mm -hmm. I know that the likelihood I get caught the delay and the size of the fine are vastly smaller yeah. than the Arch upside of continuing to break the law. Yeah. Musk, who gives a shit if it's illegal? They're not going to they're not going to put him in jail. They're not going to say to Trump, you're no the the all of our election laws are the following. Lie, cheat, break the law, get an office. And then it'll be embarrassing and the election commission will fine you and they'll shame your election, your campaign manager, and you're still the f-ing senator. So the the incentives, until they say, until there's some sort of comp- real risk that they can shut down, for example, all your media spending, if they say, OK, if if this guy engages in this, he could go to jail or the campaign has to stop all media spending. Like you could get an injunction if it's really blatant. What incentive is there for Musk not to do this? What do you think about this? Do you think that Musk is weighing up the odds here and thinking it doesn't matter, even if he gets a massive fine or some sort of penalty, it doesn't matter because if Trump's elected, it'll all be fine. And if he's not elected, it'll probably still be fine as well. Is he weighing up those odds? Really, if he got a big fine, say $20, $50 million, it really means nothing to him at this point. It reminds me of when he got into trouble with the funding secured tweet with the SEC. See, and he did get a fine there, which was nothing to Tesla, nothing to him. But he wasn't allowed to be chair of Tesla for a time. I think it was three years, which is probably coming up now. And so something like that would be a penalty. But here he's weighing up the odds and thinking it's no big deal because Trump, if he gets elected, will help Elon. He's bankrolling Trump to the tune of about a hundred million dollars. So he's going all in and pulling these kinds of stunts, which may be borderline illegal. I don't know. It seems like a lot of people don't know, but he's taking the risk here and just running with it. Yeah. I agree. He doesn't care. If he wins, if Trump wins, he's scot-free. This is a scot-free risk that he takes. 
And if he loses, she's going to have a hard time going after him and she probably won't. Right. And so I think our, our laws, especially election laws, do not anticipate shameless fucks like they just don't. And this is Trump. I think it brings to question whether he's cognitively disabled. And that's a negative. That is showing up on poll after poll after poll is, is he Biden too? Dirty Biden, essentially. Dirty Biden. I mean, it's true. Even Elon said a while ago in tweets, as tweets had documented over years, of course, and he used to say that Trump for a second term would be too old to run, just like Biden has turned out to be. He's changed his mind. And Trump has said of Elon that he's a BS artist. He used to say that. Trump's been pro fossil fuels, anti-EVs, anti-autonomous vehicles. So there's a strange bedfellows here and Elon's gone all in for millions and millions of dollars here. You have to ask why that is. And this is how it relates to the uh, my other episodes. The question is, why is Elon going all in with Trump? We could ask lots of questions about that and maybe I will in upcoming episodes as things unfold. Now, if you're getting value out of this episode so far, I'd really appreciate it. If you remember to hit that like button to help the algorithm to spread it to more people and do subscribe if you're new here and you want more of this kind of content in the future. Those numbers are showing some real resonance. We were showing off some stats about that. Is he too old? to? And then therefore you're voting for, for, for J.D. Vance, who is paid for by Peter Thiel and Elon Musk, essentially. So I do think it's a risk for Musk to take and he will take it because he it will be advantaged. And if she wins, I think he's he, the risk will be problematic for him, but not uh, not fatal for him. You know, he'll just he'll just behave, although saying she hates Christians and stuff like that shows that he's really he's also mentally has some mental problems. She's referring to what Elon's been saying on X on Twitter, anti Harris campaign here. He's stretching the limits of the truth, really, with these things. But that's what happens in these campaigns. Very intense getting towards the end. And he's all about free speech, supposedly. Well, that's a question mark as well, whether he's a hypocrite on that. But those are the kind of things that he's been saying leading up to this election. I think the real quiet winner in this is Peter Thiel. And I think he will take down all of them because he quietly, he's very sharp. He sits behind the scenes. He and Elon did not get along before this, by the way, at all in a way that was significant. So I suspect if Trump wins, there's going to be one ugly there's going to be one ugly fight going on among those people. Okay, so that's interesting. Bringing up J.D. Vance and Peter Thiel. So we've got Elon Musk versus Peter Thiel, but they're really on the same side in this one. Peter Thiel was all in on Trump last time. He even gave a speech and really was vocal and visible. This time he's in the background. Now, I did a episode on the other channel, the Stocks Today with J.J. about Peter Thiel, and they were asking him in the All In podcast when he appeared on that. That, about why he's not more visible in this campaign but really as she's saying here that he is behind the scenes he is responsible or it could be said for putting JD Vance where he is bankrolling him so this is interesting where Elon's being all in being very vocal being himself being being huge and Peter Thiel just being in the background but still having an influence without even giving a speech or anything like that it's about a one in three chance if Donald Trump is reelected, that that he dies in office just based on his age and his body mass index. That means there's a guy who was a mediocre entrepreneur, VC at best, served four years in the Marines, which he should be honored for, got elected to Senate, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. And this guy is bought and paid for by Peter Thiel. It's not his service in the Marines. It's not... He's a smart guy. It's not his book. It's not any of that. There's two reasons that Senator Vance could be a heartbeat from presidency and basically the president. There's two reasons. The oh, first is Peter. President. The second is Teal. <laughs> yep. Well, that's interesting thinking about what could happen if Trump dies in office, which, as he said, was a possibility given his age and his lifestyle. J.D. Vance would become president. And then we've got Peter Thiel as one of his main supporters and Elon Musk in the mix as well. These two billionaires, the tech billionaires who do think similar things. They, they have a similar sort of philosophy. So this is developing. This is the tangled kind of web where we've got these four individuals, some sort of alliance. And, you know, we could investigate what the reasons behind this, what these billionaires want, if they can get their way in politics to get what they want. That's the one I'm watching. I, you know, I I think Elon's in more trouble in a Trump presidency 
than a Kamala Harris. I think he's got issues and you know Democratic issues of investigation and regulatory. There is going to be an ugly fight at the top there. That's interesting because Elon does have a lot of probes, investigations. There's been articles about that, a recent New York Times article about that. All of the investigations and probes into Elon's companies, including Tesla, including SpaceX. And so he does have something to benefit out of this. If Trump gets elected, he's going all on Trump and giving nearly $100 million to the campaign. So Trump kind of owes him. That's the way that politics works. But Trump has been known to turn on people, fire people, get rid of people. So Elon's taking the probability here that he'll be okay under Trump. So you have to question whether he's going all in on Trump to help his problems that he's having with Tesla in the background. So will this actually help Elon? If Trump wins, I wouldn't want to be Trump. I think he's among some very difficult characters. I didn't see that. That's interesting. I didn't yeah. I didn't see that. But because the way I see it, and again, it just always, in my opinion, they're not going to get I'd along. love to write a book called Incentives. I just want people... Ah connect the dots but yeah charlie munger talked about incentives look for the incentives all the time in investing he said that look for the incentives here are the incentives and this is what's so dangerous about not immediately having a gag reflex around a move to autocracy there's greater incentive to support trump than harris if you're famous or you're uh, because here's the thing if you're uh, elon musk and you support trump very very visibly and harris is elected they're not going to they're not going to punish your company. They're not going to put you in jail. They believe in rule of law. Donald Trump is saying, if I'm elected, I'm going to prosecute Google to the full extent or Jews, it's your fault if I don't get elected. So all of the incentives are, OK, if I root for this clown and he doesn't win, I'm OK because the people, the other side believes in rule of law. A lot of people would say that that's not true, that they do want to prosecute Elon in certain ways. Elon will probably say that if Trump doesn't get elected and he kind of is saying that, that people are after them. He's implied that on X from time to time. Elon implies that he's an underdog and there's a lot of people against him. But you have to say there's a lot of government money going to Tesla and SpaceX in terms of contracts and credits. Will Trump continue that, increase that? He's talked about Elon helping with efficiency in the government, the Department of Efficiency. And that, could that be a big conflict of interest where Elon can work for his own interests? He's got so many interests there in terms of regulation with SpaceX and FSD. So could that help with him? He's probably hoping that that could help, I would say, with so much money being put into this campaign going all in. There's a reason for that. And I don't think it's just about free speech or whatever he says it's about. They're not going to go after personal prosecution, but the autocrat might come after me. I think so that is what's exactly going to happen. I mean, I think Elon's in more trouble in a Trump presidency. I think he doesn't. He's the one who's sort of off. Um, he's got obviously some not cognitive issues. He, he's, you know, he's really lost his mind in many ways, allegedly. Um, I think Teal is pulling all the strings here. I just, I just, Peter Teal is quiet and deadly. Elon Musk is loud and he's just reminds me of some of these oligarchs that ended up not, not living. But, but, but the whole point of a democracy, the whole point of having different branches of governments and, and members of Congress mm -hmm. and three branches and a military, a secretary of defense that comes from a civilian background, not a military. All of these things are meant to put in place checks and balances. Yeah. And we're about to, for the first time, I think, maybe there's mm -hmm. someone else, where essentially you have one man, Peter Thiel, who could literally control the president. There is no, something, something Peter Thiel will never hear from a vice president or potentially a president Vance, something he will never hear is no, ever. Yeah, cost him $50 million. He's the one I'm watching. I'm not watching email. And he's just a ridiculous circus of a person. And I think it'll end badly for him. But Peter Thiel's the one I'm looking at. Well, I think this is fascinating. What do you think about this with Elon and Peter Thiel really vying for influence? It could be argued control of higher levels of government. These two billionaires really trying to get some sort of control on government for different reasons. We could talk about what those kind of reasons are. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure there will be comments about this being political, being close to the election. <laughs> 
I actually can't wait till it's over to see what happens and for all of the debate, a lot of the debate and all the circus going on to be over. I'm not sure it will be over. If it's a close election, it could go on for months and months and could get worse. It could be chaos, but we'll have to see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, if you don't know, I've just launched YouTube memberships. There's still Patreon, so now you can choose between the two. They're the same price and similar perks, very similar, the same content, exclusive content, early access to new videos on both platforms. Hit that join button on YouTube and there'll be links to Patreon and the YouTube membership in the description as well. Hope to see you there. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put a link to a related video on screen and also in the description for those watching elsewhere. And thanks to everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one.